Hey P Gamers, this is DW and I'm just going to talk to you through this video on how to scan a dihedral in Gaussian. I've been asked this uh, to fix the audio on this video. I don't know what happened a year ago or so when it didn't record anything. But uh, I'm going to just do a voiceover. So I'm just playing the same video now but just telling you what I'm doing. Um, there's other videos out there that probably are better but I keep getting requests to fix the audio on this one. So hey, y'all asked so I'll do it. Alright, so what we've got going here is we want to scan a dihedral for a molecule. So we want to take this molecule and rotate it all the way around and calculate the energy of every step. So I've got these different panels open using Gaussian, um, the Gaussian for windows. So you can turn on the labels and that helps. So you get the different views here. You turn the labels on for the molecule and you can see the different atom types. And our definition for the um, dihedral will be between atom 2 and 1, 5, and 6. So it's the angle between this plane here, defined by these three atoms, and then the plane defined by 1, 5, and 6. So each, each three points defines a plane. So we have these three points here defining a plane, and we have these three points defining a plane. And so that's going to be the two planes that are defined that rotate with respect to each other. And the dihedral angle is the angle between those planes. There's this piece of uh, this attachment or, or this the uh, command, the, re the redundant coordinate editor, this little dialog box that they have in Gaussian that is really fantastic for this. You can define those dihedrals as you can see. Uh, you can do lots of different things. You can freeze certain coordinates. You can release them and freeze the whole molecule, but release one coordinate if you just want to modify a particular bond length. Uh, but this, we're going to scan this coordinate. So we have 36 steps at 10 degrees each, and we've defined, using our atom labels, what the dihedral is that we want to um, scan. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we'll look next at the um, options that we have in the Gaussian calculation window. <coughs> Just scroll ahead. We'll make this video a little shorter. Okay. And so we have over here um, the job type, optimization. We can come down here and click scan. Okay. We have the redundant coordinates that we're going to use to scan. Let's use a semi empirical method, PM6. That'll be really fast. So it'll finish while we wait. Um, of course, you want to higher more accurate results you got to up the level of theory and basis set. I, I don't like that right connectivity it just clutters up the input file and so I always uncheck that. And if you're taking an optimization and it breaks symmetry a lot of times that will cause the optimization to fail. So this ignore symmetry checkbox is important sometimes when you're doing optimizations. Okay. And So when you s submit the job or hit edit you have to save the file. So you save the file um, it's going to tell me to overwrite it, so that's fine. And then you get to look at the input file. And here you can make some edits. You can change the title. You can make sure that the checkpoint file is good. Um, you can see the commands are pretty straightforward. We're going to opt using mod redundant functionality. We're going to have PM6 as our level of, of theory and basis set. And we're going to not use symmetry. We have the charge and multiplicity of 0 and 1. And then we have the atom specification section. And then down at the bottom, you see this dihedral 2156. It's going to be the dihedral definition. S means scan. 36 means the number of steps. And then the 10.0, it must have a decimal place because it's looking for a um, floating point number. So if you don't have a decimal place there, if you just put 10, it's going to give you, a, it's going to fail. So 10.0 would be our step size. We're going to run it. You'll see it doesn't take very long at all. And so here it's going, you see, I'll, I'll say from there to there was a step size. And so that was just maybe three seconds. So it's going to take just a few seconds to finish, maybe a minute, because it's 36 steps and each one's about three seconds. So maybe about a minute and a half. So I hope that uh, you enjoy using Gaussian. I always have. It's uh, been fantastic. I mostly use it to look at the structure of molecules and their symmetries and then also 
using them to predict spectra. So I will produce an infrared spectrum or a Raman spectrum and compare that to experiment. And then I will use the vibrational animations in Gaussian to assign the peaks. And so you see a particular vibration and it has a frequency in the spectrum and you can determine what, uh, what vibration is associated with that peak in the infrared or in the Raman. <clears throat> There's other things you can display, like you're showing the, the Cartesian coordinates. The x-axis is the carbon-carbon bond in this case. It's going to finish here pretty soon. Since it's doing the scanning, if you're quick and you see the convergence criteria come by, you see a yes and several no's. And a lot of times when it's in between these, these critical points, like if it's just barely turned a little bit, it wants to slide downhill. And so, you know, this might be a converged geometry, but in between that it's not. Um, while we're looking at this, we can talk about the atom list editor. And this is a way that you can change the, the listing, the atom labels. Um, if you change that tag, then it'll reorient them and it'll change the way that they're bonded together, at least the definitions of the bond links and angles. Um, so it's showing that, that the hydrogen atom 3 is bonded atom 1 at an angle with atom 2 of 108 degrees. And then when we get to the fourth angle, fourth atom, we need three parameters to, to find it in space. And so we say that that fourth hydrogen is bonded to atom 1 <clears throat> with a bond length of 1.1. It's an angle with atom 3 with an angle of 108, and it's a dihedral with atom 2 of negative 116. So this is how you know our, our dihedral um, is always using four atoms because three of them define the first plane and the other three define the second plane, and the dihedral angle is the angle between those two planes. What I like to do is I like to start you know, if I were to build this molecule by hand, I would say carbon bonded to carbon with a certain carbon-carbon bond length. And so that's going to be my initial bond length. Then I would have a hydrogen bonded to carbon and an angle from the other carbon. So I'm sort of defining the umbrella away from the stat. And so then the other hydrogen at an angle from that carbon and then a dihedral from the other, other hydrogen. So when you define methyl groups or threefold symmetry groups, you're going to have a dihedrals within that group of 120 degrees. If you define the carbon-carbon bond as your first two, two atoms, then you have the angle from that carbon as your third coordinate, and then the fourth coordinate will be these 120 degree dihedrals. And I think that's the best way to define your, your, your end groups um, if you're ever doing them by hand using this atom uh, editor. If they're, if they're uh, angles with respect to this carbon and then they're dihedrals with respect to each other, then they're independent and the, the one can rotate with respect to the other. And so that's a way to create independent in groups that can rotate with respect to each other by having all of the angles and dihedrals defined on this end and only referred to the, the thing that bridges the rotating bond with the bond angle and the initial bond length. Okay, the job is completed, and we can talk about then the output. We want to get the log file. The log file at the end has um, a nice uh, summary of all of the energies, but we're also, if you notice, we checked the box that said read in, in intermediate geometries. And so we can, um, I was hoping that the coordinate system would be centered on the center mass, but they didn't do that. I don't know why. Uh, but we can look at these intermediate geometries and click through them. And so it's showing that as our initial step here. And then we go to step two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Or we can hit the play button and it shows us the whole thing. Now when it gets all the way around to the back, it jumps back to the original. So it's halfway through the video and then it gets to the end and it jumps back. And then we can look at the energy related to that scan. If we go up to results and hit scan, 
then we get the energy plot. And this is absolutely cool. So it starts out at the 180 degree dihedral angle, which is the minimum energy, and then we had it increasing. So it went from 180 to whatever that is, plus 360. And so then there's the maximum where the chlorines bump into each other, it goes through a minimum and then a maximum when it goes over the hydrogen, and then it reaches the minimum again. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed that.